Hi guys, so let's look at how to create a 40 page photo portfolio book template on the iPad. Now this can be a little bit fiddly, but you'll discover as we go through it that I'm going to make it a lot easier for you. So let's have a look at this, shall we? First things first. Now this tutorial, like many others, will make use of a template that was created originally in Photoshop. It was saved as a PSD file, and you'll find a lot of these sorts of files on the internet, and you will find them easy to work with if you observe a few rules for Affinity Photo and set up the preferences properly. So let's check that now. Open Affinity Photo on your iPad, or you can open it on your desktop, it's much the same, but we're working with the iPad, and go to Preferences. Turn on the options for dealing with PSD files. Now this is very important. You'll see them on the right hand side there. Automatically update, automatically lock background. Import PSD text as text, not pixel layers. Import PSD smart objects where possible. And we'll be using smart objects. I've also enabled all the others as well. So why not? It all comes in handy in the end. And you're not fishing around mid-project looking for something that needs turning on. So with Affinity Photo, we'll need to create each and every double page spread in its own file. So that will be 20 files, two A4, two A4 pages per spread. In this example, you can see both a page on the right and a page on the left, with the spine center line down the middle. But don't go larger than 40 pages. You will then run into spine creation issues if you do. So 40 pages or less on standard paper and you really don't have to worry about having a spine there. That centre line is just the fold line and the lines either side are the margins for that page. Don't think of that as a wide spine, it's not. It's just the centre line with margins either side. Now the overall detail, the initial layout is as can be seen here. The blue rectangles, kind of bluey green I guess, are photo place markers and we'll talk about creating those later on. Makes it very easy to lay out. But first, the overall size is 5031 by 3578 pixels overall. That includes the bleed, mind you. I'm going to switch from pixels to millimeters a little in a couple of segments. That's two A4 sheets side by side with bleed added on all of our sides. So let's have a look at that now. And you can see the layers over the on the right hand side there, um, the different things elements on that page. The guides themselves are really simple. The first one to look at is the bleed guide. Now on the iPad, you put these in slightly different than you do with margins and guides on the desktop version. But the document size is 426 millimeters by 302 millimeters, or in pixels, 5031.3 by 3578 pixels. Forget pixels, we're working in millimeters. Why is it 426? That's two A4 pages side by side with a bleed on the left and a bleed on the right. 3 millimeter bleed, a total overall width of 6 millimeters extra. So set the bleeds. That's easy enough to do. That's 3 millimeters on all sides by drawing out guides from the document toolbar. So you go up to the toolbar, that's the page with the three dots in it on the top, and go to guides. Total size 426 by 303 millimeters. When you create your new page, create it that size. Put a blank rectangle pulled out as a background layer, and you can see that there. Now I mentioned pixels again because, nah, because I do. I'd recommend staying with millimeters for ease of calculation. I mean, who talks about paper sizes in pixels? The other guides is just as straightforward. Margins are as set. Now you can set the margins from the context toolbar or you can draw them in as guides. Now I've kind of got a mixture of both. I'm showing the margins left, right, top and bottom. There's a bigger margin at the top than there is on the bottom. 
and you can see the margins all around there. Center guides are set, so you've got the center of each A4 page. I'm sure you're pretty good at math, you can work out how to do that. That's very easy. Now that completes the margins and guides set up. Two pages per sheet, 20 sheets. You can begin saving them as blanks now if you wish. Aha, but wait. There are still common elements to add to each page. May as well put as much as you can on each page, save you doing it later. Now, common page additions. Now we can add the common page elements. These are design elements that exist on every page, so we can simply create them here in our master page, think of it as that, and simply remove them if a page doesn't have them. Like the cover page, for example, is slightly different than all the other pages. And you don't have to remove them, you just uncheck the checkbox and they disappear. Now firstly, there's two accent lines. You can see them, the black horizontal lines at the top of each page there. These are each a straight line curve, drawn 33mm down and the width of the page from margin to margin. Simple, just draw two straight lines. Easy as. Now page numbering. The next layer contains the page number elements, dimensions and position as shown. And the elements in this layer are shown next, but you can see on the right, the page number element goes right across the two pages. It's 425.6 millimeters in width and it's 7.4 millimeters in height or depth if you like, that little band. And it's positioned See the position on the right hand side? It's positioned 17.2 millimetres down from the very top edge. That's outside the base. So 17.2 millimetres down and it puts it just there. Now inside that you're going to have a couple more layers for the page number, the, page, the booklet name and on the right hand side we can't see it because of that toolbar pull out is the right hand side page number. So let's have a look at that enlarged. This layer group contains the page number, a dividing line, you can see that purple vertical line there between 38 and photography portfolio, and the book name on the left, and the page number only on the right page, and there's a little inset there showing the page number. Very easy, and you can position those very accurately by using the transform um, part of the toolbar. So you can draw those out, position them right exactly where you want them. Each layer is named appropriately. So the 38, now you've got to type these in by hand remember, it won't do it automatically for you. This is not a, this is not a, uh, not a thing like Affinity Publisher. If you want a page number on a page, type it in. That's easy. So call the layer 38, it's page 38. It's got a vertical curve, shape one, and that's a shape, but it's a curve. Now you've got some text, photography portfolio, and the, the layer has been named photography portfolio. So they're easy to find. But on the right hand side, you've got another little text box called 39, and that's layer 39. So that's fairly straightforward. The numbers are aligned right in both sections. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, aligned right in the left-hand page section and a line left in the right-hand page section. You can see that there. My mistake. Sorry about the confusion. Now this is your master page so far. The inset shows the named layers and groups. You've got page numbers, you've got lines, that's the two lines at the top, and you've got the white rectangle background. If you think this may be a useful document, it would be a good idea to export this setup as a template and name it something useful like photo book A4 template. You don't want to be go looking for something that's just a date or a time or something almost useless like A4 template. Hmm, how many A4 templates have you created? Well, if none, <laughs> you're off to a good start. Call this one photo book A4 template. Now the US letter size version, this is A4 remember, is almost the same with slightly adjusted measurements because the US letter size, common in North and South America and most um, US protectorates and territories, 
it's just got slightly adjusted measurements. And I'm sure if you're dealing with US ladder, you can work it out really easily. You've got a full size page plus three inch bleeds either side and top and bottom. So your page just needs to be a total of US ladder size plus six millimeters on the width and the height. That's three millimeters each bleed side. Easy as. And your margins reflect the same. Now, the text layers, finally, group your descriptive text elements in their own layers so you can modify them to suit your image layouts. Naturally, these will not be the same on every page, nor will the images, so they won't belong in your master template. That's why you've created your template and exported that document just previously, exported it as your template, and then you've gone and created page one, page two, page three, page four. But be careful, don't call them page one, call them pro, uh, page one if you like, dash two and three. Page three, dash four and five, because you've got two pages on each master that you're saving. Makes them easy to come back to. Just a note on page sizes, two standard paper sizes are very common depending on where you live. If you're in the UK, Europe, etc., just about anywhere in the world except the Americas, you'll be using A4. If you're in any of the Americas, you'll almost naturally be using US letter. And I'm sure if you haven't already, you've probably experienced the confusion that um, cheap printers have that you buy from the market. <laughs> They'll be set to a different paper size. Possibly one you haven't got. But never mind. Now, the blue image markers, these are, are scattered throughout your document. Don't put your images into your document straight away. You should create the blue image place markers as AF photo files as stock sizes. Now, you don't want a random group of very odd sized photos throughout your book. It looks rubbish. It looks amateurish. You want professional sizes. Have a look through any good book that you pick up in the marketplace. Go down to your local supermarket. Pick up a good magazine on photos or photography or cars or motorbikes. Have a look at their images and flick through the magazine. You'll notice that they're nearly all set sizes. Apart from advertising, um, articles will have set size photos on display. By that I mean there won't be random sizes, triangles, circles, round things and odd fancy shapes trying to squeeze it into a margin with some text in it. Usually you put your photo in and you put your text around it. Now on the right hand side there you'll see there's a whole range of photos and most of them look about the same. Now they're photos that have been placed. Your images will, after all, be much easier to manage if you have a set range of image sizes to mix and match throughout your book, depending on the subject, as shown here. In other words, you must plan your book for a professional look. Now, I'm, I'm ham harping on this because it's quite important. For example, these four images are all the same size, 1235 pixel by 1042 pixel. So actually, you only need to create one blue image file of that size and name it suitably. Simple. Name it rectangular image 1235x1042.af photo. Don't name it as PNG. You don't want it as a PNG. We're going to embed this file. Now there's photo two, it's an embedded document. See how it's highlighted there? You've got the photo and logo layer. All of these are in their own, grouped in their own layers. Photo one, two, three, four, and five. And it's an embedded document, not an image, but an embedded document. In other words, it's a document you've created outside of this project. You've opened Affinity Photo, created a rectangular file, 1024, whatever it was a moment ago, and saved it as photo2.af photo. Well, that's its natural thing. You don't have to put that in. Just save it 
um, in a nice directory somewhere where you can find it later. Don't lose your files. Now, photo to the original, and I've saved it as photo-2-page 35, and saved it as photo-2-p35af photo, so I can find it when I'm looking for it later. I can now place that in any document, just like any other image. So in other words, if you've got your project open, and, you're, and you know exactly where you want to put that little image. You can see it's 1235 by 1024 pixels high. It's a slight landscape rectangular form. Note the size. Now this is a very powerful option. You just place that. When you go to place it in your document, don't look for PNG, TIFF or JPG. Go looking for your, A, your photo-2-P35 because it's page 35 you're going to put it on, and place it in there. Presto, embedded document. Now, why is this important? I'll tell you. Okay, now this is a big project. So I've put it all together for you already. You can download all 40 pages, well, 20 actually, two to a page, as one collection of AF photo files in an archive. Most pages contain embedded images which you can exchange for your own work. You don't need Affinity Publisher or Designer. After all, if you have an iPad and you have Affinity Photo, you can create photo books for your client on the fly. You can be travelling Spain and fill a book with photos. Perfect. Export it as a PDF, upload it to Kindle, um, well, KDP, Amazon, or wherever you like, and there's your book in the marketplace. Now, to change the embedded Im image, let's get back on track here, wandering off there. To change the embedded image, simply double tap the icon. Now, you can see on the right hand side, I've got a group, photos and logo, photo one, photo two, and photo three. Now, if you double tap on one of those icons, the layer icon, the embedded image will open. So let's change photo one. In the list there, photo one, the blue rectangle first in the group. Double tap the blue icon. Not the words, not the word photo one, but the blue icon. That's important. Affinity doesn't recognize it if you tap on the words. Having double tapped the image of photo one, it opens as a normal image. Hey presto, there's the image you created. But you can see the guideline showing there. Now, how cool is that? Now you can replace as you normally would. So you can replace that photo. So let's just place a stock photo in its place. And I'll drag this out of um, the stock photo toolbar on the side, the st stock uh, studio. Yeah, a bit tongue-tied there. Never mind. Here we go. Having double tapped the image of photo one, it opens as a normal image. Now you can replace as you normally would. So let's just place a stock photo in its place. And there it is. That's a stock photo from um, Pixel Images, I think it was. I forget now anyway. It's one, in the, one of the ones in the stock images. Then tap the home command on the top left. See the left arrow up there? You might be wondering, oh, how do I get back to my document? Oh, it's gone. No, it's not. Just click, once you've got your photo replaced, tap on the left hand arrow and you go back to your page. Presto, there's your image sitting in the page. How cool is that? Now you've got all your place markers, you've got all your images and you can slowly work through the images on the page, double tapping on each blue image in the layer panel replacing in the pop-up with the image you want, left arrow back to your document. And there it is sitting in your document just where you will want it. All your images can be handled this way. Place blue rectangles created in Affinity Photo and embed them where you want them just as you would with normal images. This is a useful little addition to your toolbox and I hope you find it so. Now that's the end really of this 
uh, tutorial. As I say, you'll find a zip file containing all of these files already created for you. All you have to do is replace what's in the blue images with your own images. And there's quite possibly a lot of them. So this is not some five minute job that you're doing here. This will produce a really beautiful book. And that's it. So that's it for this little tutorial. I won't continue with all 40 pages. I'm sure your needs will not match my outline. But hopefully you now know how to set up your photo book in Affinity Photo for iPad. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.